welcome, welcome, welcome to Stoked Season 1, Episode 12. This, of course, is the Star Trek online podcast for the new millennium. My name is Brian. With me is Jeremy. That's me. And Kareem. Well, hello there, Brian and Jeremy. How are you guys doing? I'm fine. You guys ready to do a little ultimate Star Trek online podcasting? Well, I the sure am. We've got a lot of things coming up. We First of all, we've got some great news to cover. There has been so much that has happened in the last week since our last episode. We've also got some more information from our anonymous tipsters playing the closed beta. And we've got some show discussion coming up. And then we're going to pick out the best tidbits from news articles. And then we'll end the show on a positive note with some epic screenshot reviews. As always. Why, that sounds epic, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so before we go too much directly into Stowe, should we talk about the new website that Cryptic is Sure, yeah. First Star Trek Online? Yes. Yeah, before we talk about Stowe, let's talk about the Stowe website. Right. Well, actually, this is, I think, big news for them because we've always been getting on them about how their their appearance towards people is needs a little work. Yeah, it always has. So I think Even their Champions Online website looks a little <coughs> amateur. You guys like the new one, though? Their new yeah. Site? Yeah, uh, I really it, do. It kind of looks hardcore. Yeah. It's got a L Cars look to it, which matches the computer interface for Star Trek. Now, you just click past that, but that's a, a new thing for like new users. If you go to the site and you're not yet uh, logged in, it's got yeah. like this uh, splash page. Which is, it's just the biggest stuff that new people need to see. Trailer, box art, uh, uh, invites, pre-order. pre-order. Get your pre-order on, get your newsletter on, or get your uh, hat in the ring for a This really beta. reminds me of what you see on a lot of new movie uh, websites like the official website it for does new seem movies a lot that like come a out. New movie. Good yeah, call. It's Which, hardcore. Hey, Brian, you notice what good call Jeremy just did there? I did, in fact. Nice. Uh, then once you go into there, they've got they're just they're they're hitting you in the face with with Star Trek online Bam. visuals. You've got that's, that's what I like for my game developers. I want them to smack me in the face with their stuff. I want them just right. to create things and just whack in the face. You've got a little you've got a little slider with the latest news with art out there, and you can get um, all kinds of little tidbits right from the site. I just got to tell you, it's sexy, and and it's got like you can get to all the latest screenshots. You get the community information going on. Yeah, info about the game. They've made uh, information about what's in the game, like information regarding bridge officers, the ships, the crew, all that different stuff is very accessible now from their website, which is awesome. Yeah, and, and it's not as cluttered. As the old design started to look a little cluttered, as they added more and more links to the left-hand side, it kept getting longer and longer, and mm-hmm. you couldn't find what you were looking for. Well, now it's just a nice little top bar with drop-downs. I do you hover generally over. hate JavaScript top bar drop-downs, yeah. but they actually do These good actually work. One. Yeah, so that's I nice. don't know. Maybe they use the good code. I'm not sure why. But <laughs> yeah, no, well, there's a not, flag. Yeah, just, yeah, it's just a little HTML flag. Just you know, use use, use, use not ask JavaScript and <laughs> right. e- equals one, and then it's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, thank you, Cryptic, for uh, using that. Yes. Um, so, all right, moving on. You can on. find that, by the way, on uh, the Google Code website, google.com slash code. <laughs> Jeremy wanted everybody out there to know that he won one of the copies of J.J. Abrams' new Star Trek. Uh, Via Twitter. I just got the Blu-ray, the three-set Blu-ray. Yeah. It's great. I, it sounded got, like I had the a, option of the, the entire disc. Second disc is nothing but behind the scenes crap. And one of the things Brian will like is they they go through and they kind of go through how they develop the shaky cam technique. And oh. one of the ways they develop the shaky cam technique, actually the only way, is J.J. Abrams literally stands behind the camera guy and shakes him, pats the the camera the film ha- canister to a certain rhythmic beat, and he hits it to this beat, and that's how they get the shaky cam. Are you screwing with me right now? <laughs> so the same way they get in Lost, too. Are well, you screwing with me? Not even so, kidding at all. So, okay, just so, so J.J. Abrams this. has his own, like, drum beat? So Only one other guy on set could match the beat, and so when J.J. Abrams had to step away, that guy would line up with J. and he'd start getting in the same rhythm, and then they would swap. <laughs> and they would swap. So is that guy's job title, like, no, canister he was like, beater? He was like, executive co-producer or something. Like, he had some really big <laughs> title, but, uh, but he really did other stuff. That wasn't the only thing he did. So... <laughs> So J.J. Abrams thought, I'm making a Star Trek movie, and I'm not effing it up hard enough. While I'm filming it, I'm going to smack the camera a lot. Yeah. And, and he also helped out with the flares. Yeah, yeah, and the flares are, are really good. I liked it. I, you know what? Watching Photoshop, again, adding that, by the watching way. again, I was worried that I was not going to like it, and I like it. It's how, how many times have you seen it now? Uh, six. Wow. Six times. You were a disgusting human. <laughs> But if you compare that to all the times I've seen the other Star Trek movie, there's a drop in the bucket. So. Yeah, 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 that's true. Um, yeah, but I bet you if you com- if you extrapolate out how much time per month you spend watching Star Trek movies, this is now all-time top. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's a problem, man. That's a weird equation because you're taking you're taking years and years of Star Trek like Wait a minute, that's a weird equation. Yeah, that's, that's like <laughs> that's like look, looking at like oh I don't know the equation like hey, Brian. Could you stop mathing me, please? <laughs> Well, that's a weird looking equation. Just I don't math. know what that is. Uh, and those, those numbers are too complex. One other interesting tidbit from the uh, movie is um, right, one of the ways that. they did the drop shoot where guys are dropping through the air. You uh-huh. remember when they're dropping down to the uh, drilling rig? Right. Yeah. So they, they, had, they, needed, they needed some conventional ways to get that. So what they did is they went up on a platform out in the Paramount parking lot. And dropped people. And they put a mirror down on the ground so it would reflect the sky. And then they took a guy with a camera over it. And J.J. back <laughs> him, and they just had the guy, they had the actor look straight up into the air while he's standing on the mirror, and that was the that was the falling from the close-ups when they're when they're falling to the uh, dr- huh. drill rig. Kind of a cool like um, conventional way, like low budget, like something we could yeah, pull. Yeah, I really like conventional effects, and the more that you use practical in modern, effects, mo- yeah, practical term. effects. Uh, that's something we could do. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm always like, we c- oh, oh, let's make a movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not totally screw up an existing franchise, though, while we do it. We can write um, it down. And they also talked a little bit about uh, how the ways they made the uh, digital effects look like oh, practical man. effects. So it was really interesting stuff. All right. Was, it, the, the Star Trek Blu-ray is a great set. Some people don't like the movie, but despite that... Was, that, that was that way, all the way over. It's very, it's very interesting information, regardless of the movie content. So, I, I would like to point two things out. Jeremy won a copy, got super excited. Chris paid ridiculous amounts of money to own the copy. Only $22. Ooh, that is like $3,000 too many. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they owe they me <laughs> roughly $2,900-ish. Gotcha. Um, other news of what's happening this week, uh, Star Trek New Voyages, uh, the first part of Blood and Fire is out. That's what I heard. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, so, if you're interested in fan-made stuff, it's I am. super, super It's the cheap. original... It's like yeah. a, a spinoff of the original, you no, might no, call no, it? it's season four. Oh. His Blood like and made Fire, by No, Blood and Fire isn't. No, Blood and... No, no, you're thinking no, of no, Phase no. 2 that's season four. That's what I'm saying. Blood oh. and Fire is Phase oh, 2. Oh, I thought that... Of Gods and Men is the one I was thinking of. Yeah, Gods and Men's a whole different... Yeah, it's a whole different oh, thing. Oh, oh, so Phase 2 guys got a new one out. Phase 2 got a new oh, one that's out. that's a great this, one. Now, the cool thing is, this is one that... It, Blood and Fire is based off of a novel by David Gerald, who wrote yes. the Tribbles episode. Yep. And he originally wrote the script, the story for this, to be a Next Generation episode, and they retrofitted it to be an original series that's episode. That's cool. That's cool. That's really cool, you guys. Yeah. That's it's, really cool. It's worth checking out. It is low budget. You, it is hard to jump past that. Oh, uh, you know... But to be honest it's not with you, bad, it's more faithful to the Star Trekiness, in my opinion, than the J.J. Abrams movie, which was more, I don't know. Well, you know what? The people like watching, Anatomy, the people watching Stoked, was. I mean, it's a much higher bid budget than Stoked, and they love this. So, <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> so if they're willing to put up with this crap, <laughs> uh, boy. <laughs> but I do recommend it. I, uh, Star Trek New Voyages.com or face, Star Trek Phase 2.com. Yeah, yeah. I think it's one of the uh, two. You know what? It's good, it's good we talk a little about general Star Trek, because sometimes we get so wrapped up in the video game that we kind of look past what everything is based around. Right. I mean, there's we a lot all of stuff kind of going on together. Well, the, the reason I bring this up is because Stowe is one of the only avenues we have of Continue original prime universe uh, content. And yeah. while uh, us J.J. Trek- Abrams fan, we call it the prime timeline. Yeah, prime, we, don't, we, don't, we don't call it that. We just call it Star Trek. Um, <laughs> but, but the uh, Star Trek Phase 2, while it's not canon, it still at least is new stories in the well, original universe. Well, and they're universe. bringing in a lot of the people that worked on the original stuff. So like it's David what Gerald. those people would have probably I mean, heck, envisioned. Even, even Major Roddenberry did the voice, the computer voices yeah. and everything. It's DC Fontana's been involved. Uh, you've, Walter Koning's been on there. Uh, um, George Decay. George been Decay there. was on there. Yeah. yeah, and there's been there's been different actors. Janice Rand. I mean, the that's whole, great. The whole the whole lot of them. I mean, it, it's been fantastic yep. so far. But anyway, try, right. check that out if you uh, if you get a chance. Jumping and, uh, back yeah. into the Star Trek Online. This news. is a video game, guys. This this game uh, is uh, gotten some. Yeah, I'm out. A little more real lately, you guys. We've got an open beta dates <laughs> announced. A little starting more at real. January 12th through January 26th, <sighs> my birthday. We're going to be able to play. <laughs> Star Trek Online in open beta. Now, the open beta is going to be a first come, first get in. And yep. the way that works is yeah. when you pre order the game, a couple of days or all, all or hopefully a couple of days around the start of the open beta, you're going to receive a beta key in your email. Yep. And then you plug that in to Star Trek Online's website and then they give you the and link you get to like download a, the game. Now I'm gonna also that. assume like that some places day, two week that thing. usually do beta promotions like File Planet, I know is really big about this. Yep. Game yep. Spy, I think, sometimes does yeah, open they do beta. Sometimes. Um, so if you're a member of some of those, you might be able to get a key and for I it. But again, it's first come, first serve. So when you get your key, you gotta answer it right we away. Don't if know you for get sure, it. right? But there's a pretty good chance that if you're in the closed beta, you're gonna get in the open beta. Um 
don't, I don't know. know that that's been confirmed yet. Yeah, but no, I would agree. It's probably it's a pretty good chance. what happens. Yeah, generally. Like, like if Champions people were in the closed beta, got in the Champions open beta. I'm right. pretty sure. So I th- there's a pretty good chance, but you never know for sure. So if you haven't pre-ordered it yet, you definitely probably want to get on that. If definitely, you want to get probably. in the open beta. Yeah, definitely, uh, probably. Probably, definitely. Definitely. Right. Probably. probably. Now, Maybe. before we move on, <laughs> do we want to talk a little bit about beta leaks or do we want to cover microtransactions? Your guys' call. I oh. think that microtransactions conversation might take some time, so let's give people what they want. The beta stuff? Yeah. Yeah, let's get the See, beta leaks. Conventional wisdom would be to make them stick around and wait for it. We don't We don't do, do that. that. We don't, we don't believe in conventional wisdom. Because we don't like ratings. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, because we know what you guys want. You'll stick around. You've got guys and gals. And we got a few gals. In our forum, for, do you want to join the forum? Girls, like Girls how surprised you are. Over at <laughs> jupitercolony.com, we're heck, organizing man? Jupiter Force, and we've gotten a few you ladies there's, in there. There's nerd ladies too, dude. According to all the data, though, it's so skewed to guys, and I'm always thrilled now, when I see a gal. Because that means there's girls out there, Brian. Girls. You're married. What do you... I know. I know. <laughs> I'm just but actually, I've seen some data that indicates that Star Trek fans have a have a larger female yeah. population oh, than some sense. other right. uh, IPs. Okay. So Shatner is sexy. That's yeah. what's going on. I there. can't disagree with that. I know you can't. And he likes to climb mountains. <laughs> when you got a dude climbing a mountain, <laughs> ladies are all over that. <laughs> all right. So here's a couple of beta leaks uh, infos that you guys are probably going to like. Now, just a just a sidetrack real quick here. Most of these have come in through. I think all of these are actually from our info, or I mean, tip tips. box tips at Jupiter Broadcasting. And I want to say something about that. Um, okay. The people that are sending beta information in. First of all, thank you. Yes, uh, you guys. Seriously, if nothing else, on a personal standpoint, it is making me so much more excited for this game than I already was. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, and I just saw the other day... Even when we get some slightly not so good information. I just saw the other day the first shot of Earth in Star Trek Online. Oh, yeah? Crazy cool. Yeah. Man? Crazy cool. Uh, none of the stuff we've seen has shown Earth. So it was so cool to see it. Um, that said, just a reminder, you are breaking the NDA, so you are doing it at your own risk. We uh, anonymize everything that gets sent to us. That's why you won't get replies from us. Right. Um, but we do receive it, but we anonymize it. That way we can't give out information to people. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're sending there. Is you're it still is being so rebel, of the so NBA. Yeah. Basically, in it's a nutshell, anonymous. we appreciate it, but we can't really say that we encourage it. No. And we're not responding yeah. because we don't have your contact <gasps> info to respond with. What we're saying is legally we can't say <laughs> we totally want you to. <laughs> I think we legally can say that, but if we're under NDA, we can't give out the information. But since none of us on the panel no, are no, we're still idea. not. I don't think I don't think we're I don't think we can actually. Oh oh ask people to violate? Yeah. Oh yeah, probably not. No, no. no. I, oh it might not even be an actual fact, it might not be a contract. It might be an NDA agreement, which is not actually enforceable. All they can do is they can revoke rights, but they can't actually go after them in a court of law. Yeah. We should totally That's do a, a we know for. nothing about uh, law yes, show. Yes. Agreements. Yeah. All right. All right. Moving forward. <laughs> moving forward, <laughs> though. Beta information. Yeah. Because that's what everybody actually <laughs> cares about. Uh, we've got multiple con- confirmations oh. that Stow works just fine under boot camps on the Macintosh. Despite Brian's poo pooing on yeah. this idea. Dude, what? but seriously, but come on. Hold if you're on. playing a video game, why would you have a Mac? Hit the pause button. There's not Rip. a single Mac now that doesn't ship with an NVIDIA 9600 or better. And the Hackintosh? Even the Mini. The Hackintosh that Brian that Chris that recently count. built? That's a PC. That's barely running OS X. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> that one's Hackintosh. actually true. What are you talking about? No. You buy your Macs, everybody. And you, you buy those Macs. You, you, you spend that but too much money to run Stowe, not quite as well as the Hackintosh? PC owners. The, the machine sitting right over there is like three times as good as the one that I've got at home. Well, yeah, but that's like Brian's saying. That's because that's that, not a Mac. That's not a Mac. Okay. Bad example. That's a PC. But it does run a Mac operating system. In theory, it could at least. Um, <laughs> so it is working fine under boot camp. We've gotten multiple people wrote in and said, I'm running it on the boot camp, but it's working Okay, good. I want to say one thing, though. It's not under boot camp. It's running it under Windows. It's just you're using drivers supplied yes, by Apple right. that they branded as boot camp for some unknown reason. And why did they call it boot camp? Not because it allows you to boot and then camp. That doesn't make any sense. It's because boot camp is hard right. and it makes you cry. <laughs> okay. And at the end of the day, you throw up and you curse at your drill instructor and he puts you on KP duty. That's why it's All called All right, are boot you done being adorable? Because I want to talk about the beta over here. I want to say some beta stuff. Hey, Chris. Yeah? Let's talk about beta. Okay. 
Uh, just kind of an interesting little thing as a nod to Cryptic for working so hard. Uh, there was, you know, the, the beta process, uh, we've mentioned before, it's, it's a lot of work. You know, there's only a couple of hours. In fact, mm-hmm. we've just been told they've upped it to a three-hour window for beta testing. That's right, from the previous two-hour window. And uh, nice. during that time, like before you play, there's a lot of patching you've got to get going. And one of the latest patches uh, on, system, on slightly lower-end systems improved the graphics and the video game oh, nice. playback. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And... Um, <laughs> they, uh, they, we think, based on some of the uh, screenshots we've seen and things like that, they've improved the glow effect of different objects. Yeah, which is kind of cool. Like, so basically, it was like a lighting upgrade. Yeah, yeah, um, they upgraded the lighting exactly. <laughs> um, but it did make <laughs> things look noticeably more realistic, and yet also not quite so realistic at the same time. It was a weird effect. Mm. It made it both better and worse. Dreamy though. No, it was yeah, dreamy. Yeah, it's like you know, hyper realistic. Um, oh, great <laughs> word. <laughs> Hyperrealism. <laughs> All right. So uh, we've uh, also gotten confirmation yeah. that while we've seen a lot in the news lately, and we covered it extensively last yeah, episode, yeah. there's no playable bridges yet, and there's also no playable Klingons yet. Yeah. But we've we've talked about on this show that we believe the Klingons are going to become unlocked possibly around uh, level 5 or level 10, right? Right. Level 10. Now, this are is we something more we'll talk about more. Level 10? Well, that seems to be the indication because okay. we've... Okay, this is all I've got to go on, but... Uh, Craig Zinkovich keeps using the same term after several hours of gameplay when he talks about a few different And we've been things. told that it takes several hours of gameplay to get to level 10. Right, right. Where you kind of reach a spot there <clears> and you start playing the game like a bad mofo. Yeah, some uh, we got some uh, previous beta mofo. info that says basically the entire tutorial spreads all the way until you get your first rank upgrade. But like basically that entire mm-hmm. time, you're learning new things about how to fly your ship and how to yeah. equip things and stuff like yep. that. And your next rank is level 10. And we've seen um, we've seen some screenshots of a work in progress in game manual for Stowe. Yeah. So you can refer to stuff. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. That is great. That's a good idea. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you want to do a quick reference? Uh, a lot of times, what I do is I tab out and I go Google search or check the form for something to champion. Right. And then you're back in the game. And I would love to just be able to look it up right. Because there champions did not ship with a um, with a, a manual. It had like a three page little thing that was how to install yeah. it. Yeah. And and that was basically it. Yeah. 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 So um, we've, it was worthless. We've, we've got a couple of different things. There was a couple of Angry. funny. Angry. I don't know. Should we mention the bugs? I feel like, you know, that's like the oh, NDA no. area. That I oh, want to well, you know, to. bugs got, are going to get fixed, though. But I mean, it's, it's funny. Fixed. It's already fixed. There, right? uh, is it really funny, bugs? It is funny. It, yeah. Uh, this the, one we were told about bridge is. Bridge officers attack fire um, with their fists. Yeah. So, like, something's die. on fire. And then they, die. And they go up to it and they start hitting it. They start yeah. punching it. Okay, that's funny. Yeah. All right. You know what? I think they should leave that in there to just let them live. And he's come back with burnt hands, and then ah! and then Nurse Chapel comes up on the bridge and sprays <laughs> Chekhov, and but the Delta has already taken his pain because that's one of the things she can do. I see. Right. Okay. Moving on. Uh, so that's a lot of. We're getting a lot of stuff in from uh, the beta tips, and we're just trying to make sure that we we verify the validity of it before we talk about it. Yep. We've got a few more things that have just come in before the show that we haven't had a chance to verify yet, so we'll be right. doing that in the next episode. Well, and we've also been getting uh, a few screenshots and stuff, and it's really hard for us to talk about these without being able to show them. So we're kind of glossing over a lot of now, that. Now, what I think yeah. we're talking about doing is doing uh, at least this is something. I don't maybe I actually haven't verbalized this yet to you guys, so let's do it live. Oh. Um, <laughs> I would like to do, when we hit open beta and the uh, closed beta uh, period is over. And the NDA drops. Do a post-mortem of what we thought, what we gathered, and how right on the money we were. Okay. So even if you're sending us something today that we can't necessarily show. I can record that now. (laughs) I'm ready to go. I know you're good. You're good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to wait till the actual beta is over and those things are done with. Or at least until I'm playing it. It's kind of a granny panties way to do it, don't you think? (laughs) Okay. You know, well, I'm right, gonna we'll I'm gonna record out. all my predictions now. I'm gonna record the results of that now, <laughs> and I'm gonna record uh, like a post mortem of the results oh. all right now. <laughs> and then I'm gonna flash forward five years, and and for the new game that's gonna Do be coming back. out with the expansion pack and what I think of it I'll and how it's gonna make Brian. the current game better. Gotcha. Uh, but so you we'll do that right after we record this. We've, we've decided. We've decided. <laughs> no out panties. of respect to the folks over at Cryptic, that if you send us a screenshot. That uh, is, has not been released by Cryptic yet. We're not going to display it in the show. Right. Same with the video. We've got a couple, couple yeah. of clips that but were sent we're to us. But we're saving it now. We're reviewing it. We're discussing it in house to base some of the information and decisions on it. It also helps us verify other information. Mm-hmm. And then we'll yeah. do a post mortem after everything's done and see how right we were where we got. Yeah. And things like that. So moving on, that's our that's our beta in- info for this section of the show. But yeah, that's uh, it. More to come next episode. All right. 
I wanted to pitch something to the panel because it came up. Now, That's us. The <laughs> panel. That's a us. Bit of hist- we're the panel. <laughs> yeah, the panel. There's a no, little he's... bit of history. Well, and, and specifically also, I'd like to hear any engagement from the audience uh, on their thoughts on this. So, Oh, somebody in the chat room just <laughs> had a, a good using point. using your big old words. I know. I would just like to seek some uh, engagement from the audience while we have a panel discussion. Here. I would like to maximize <laughs> our synergy on engagement. Jeez, dude. What were you going to say? What are we talking about? What were you going to say? Well, <laughs> somebody in the chat room just said that we can't really use the term in-house because everybody knows we're in a garage. Oh, that's a good point. So. Well, wouldn't you still technically consider this the house, though? Because it's attached. It's, it's all. Oh, yeah. It's not a detached it's all, garage, it's guys. It's all one facility. It's, it oh. is all one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's very metaphysical. So there. Take that, chat room. <laughs> uh-huh. Chat room. Yo. <laughs> all right. So um, <clears throat> City of Heroes was originally developed and owned by Cryptic, then they sold it to NCSoft. Right. So Good there's discussion. some history there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. NC Soft by a uh, friend of the show, Rick Dakin, who right. was heavily involved in the design, go be- was on a previous episode of Castle Blasta. Yes, sir. Look That's at right. that. Look at how much we do our research. We really should post. We're that. on it. Yeah, we really should. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, NC Soft is Good selling super, vo- super Boost and HeroCon recaps for City of Heroes. Yeah. So you can buy like. Um, Upgrades, or you can buy re-, re specs for your characters. So, say you you went down a certain skill path, and yeah, you know what? I want to be able to shoot fire, not ice. And so now you can buy a respec, so you can go down the fire path. Now you can also do this in in Champions Online as well. This is already available via what you, they call you can buy the C store, right? But, that, but right now it's mostly like outfits and stuff. Most of it is that, but actually they recently put um, retcons on the C oh. store. I don't know the price. Um, because I haven't been playing a whole lot of now, champions. So for City of Heroes, it's ten dollars to buy like a booster or something like that, and yeah. you can buy it. You so you essentially ten dollars, and you can add an ability to all of the characters on your account. Okay. Now that's an actual in-game effect that you get from right. by spending real life dollars. Right. No yeah. such effect if uh, currently exists in CO. And right. Champions Which online. No champions. So you can't buy like a faster flying ability. Right. Right. But. This does open a doorway where if this kind of this kind of thing like where City of Heroes is doing where you can buy better abilities, if that gets successful, you gotta imagine the other MMOs are gonna do that. Cryptic will look at doing that for Star Trek online. What do you guys think? Are you okay with these? Would you be okay with Cryptic uh, uh, developing this kind of system for Star Trek Online? Do you wanna nope. go first, Brian? That your entire answer? Yeah, go ahead, Jeremy. Nope. <laughs> okay, well well, here's a few different things. I think nope. that City of Heroes is on the decline. Not and okay they with might it. be they might be uh, gearing up to move to a, a free to play, like Dungeons and Dragons Online is recently right. done. All right, so where they've gone they... free to play, and then you just buy things through the do store. You, do you guys think it makes it unfair? Dude, no, for that some is players? so Hello Kitty ish, though. That is like I there agree. are so many yeah. stupid games in like Asia. Buy that, a cute little against, hat. Nothing against Asian games, but they're like mostly flash games. Yeah, you buy a cute little hat, you buy some panties with some hearts on them, and then and then the re- weird, creepy guys in their basement play it. But you know what? The, the outfit kind of stuff game. is not a big deal. But now when you can ba- you can buy like better flying abilities. Dude, and that's stuff? lame. Do you well, just solid? Yeah, I don't agree with being able to spend your money to enhance I, I your gameplay. I, I think, think that that's a I really bad road to go down. If you've got a guy, you know, you've got Bill Gates playing City of Heroes, and then you got me. Bill Gates can be able to outbuy me any day of the week, right? And I'm just not going to be able to compete. This is especially, um, uh, this is an especially bad move in a game like Star Trek Online. That's going to have a lot of player versus player. Because if you've got a whole, let's say, a whole Cleon yeah. fleet that's run by some rich guy, and he gives his entire fleet mates all these super boosters, they're just going to rip everybody to shreds if they've got the real-life cash to back up yeah. now, improving I'll their characters. Fine. Now, brace yourselves. We've already got Excelsior. some of this confirmed for Stowe. This that's is right. a quote from Craig Zinkovich, the yeah. director of development for Star Trek Online. He says, Star Trek Online will have microtransactions, but most of these will be cosmetic things. Some will augment gameplay, but won't replace any gameplay. Now... Further clarification on that has come through IRC chats and, and things like that. And okay. Basically, right, bring it. anything that does augment gameplay will also be obtainable through gameplay. It's just you can you can pay for it to jumpstart it. To like, well, that's something that some have wondered about. If you're like an ensign and you want a Galaxy class ship, can you just go buy no, it? No, I don't think. From from what I'm seeing, I think it's more hmm. a lot more baseline. I mean, because you you'll be able to earn a Galaxy class stuff. eventually. I think it's like I think it's like fifteen fifteen. You buy some points experience to, points to de- self defense or something, and and then you can go and hmm. Now eh. that said, sounds lame. That said, I would possibly entertain the idea for Star Trek Online of being able to buy experience points for a, for a one character, because I don't have the time to play multiple characters, but I might want to have a character up farther that could match my main character, hmm. so I could just buy that character up to that level. Uh, I don't getting have back time to, the, to do it. Getting back to the Dungeons and Dragons Online. What's the thing. difference? What was that? Was it like WoW Glider? 
What yeah, was that yeah, game yeah, you yeah, could, yeah. What's the difference between, between, uh, between having that yeah. and doing this? Well, it, so, except for one but here's the thing: if you're doing that, you're part of the ecosystem of the game in that level. Oh. If you jump over that level, you're not involved. So, like, what, let's say you have like an auction house or something, and you're, uh-huh. you're you're questing and you're getting those items. The auction house is now going to be devoid of items for levels one through twenty because everyone's going to jump Ooh, over them. After and the new players that might not yep. even know about the online store, they jump they're, in and they're they're try to get. They're going to be yeah. plumb out of luck. That's a good call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I don't I don't like it. I don't think at all. Well, again, I was just I like about the idea of maybe buying stuff. You know what? Maybe I could buy cosmetic things. Yeah, like a new uniform. Or, you know what? Okay, perfect example. Bring if, it. if they could let you do a very in-game looking Jupiter Broadcasting logo decal on the hull of your ship. Yeah. I might, I might go for that. And it costs like five bucks to submit a design or something that, like that. And then, then the three of us could be flying around with, with, with our logo on our ship. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with that. And that yeah. doesn't make us better than anybody. Well, yeah, it, it, it kind of does. does. But, well, yeah. but not in actual gameplay <laughs> terms. You guys, I know what I'm going to draw. <laughs> oh, Brian. It'll be what? like the mud flaps. I know exactly what it is. No, it's going to be like like a Jupiter or something. Oh, not a. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, <laughs> wait, wait, what were you going to say, Chris? Penis. Chris, that, on a starship? <laughs> you jerk. Brian. That's just not cool. <laughs> you jerk. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Moving on. Interesting discussion. I'd love to hear what people out there that are watching or listening, what yeah, they it, think of it. As all long right. as they keep it to the stuff that's not going to give anybody an unfair advantage just by spending money, I think we'll be fine. I, I think I think so. I agree. Yeah. I agree. All, all right. right. Why don't we talk about... weird. Yeah. Honestly, if you're doing like the like a little logo or something, why not just give that to everybody? I mean, I just... I mean, I get it. You want to make more money and everything, but I don't know. If you're well, already if you're already charging like a thousand dollars a month just to play, yeah. The but game. okay, oh, let me not, point this out. Actually, it's going to be. We don't know, but we online games be. online games have been fifteen dollars a month, pretty standard for ten years now. I think it's going to be more. Fifteen dollars was worth more ten years ago than it is now, especially U.S. dollars. Though that said, though, Jeremy, uh, server costs. You know, v- there's virtualization. I think the technology has gone going, down. Bandwidth has become a little cheaper. Actually, that's not actually true. Actually, the the average income in the like the United States has gone down something like nine yeah. percent in the last decade. Well, and they're coming they're coming out. On, uh, you know, we just had a major recession. Yeah. So I think it's the wrong time to be hiking prices it, on everything. Yeah, but if there's ever a title where you have a fan base that'd be willing to play a premium for that title, no, it I is get that. Be but no, but you the, don't want to burn your bridges. You don't want to piss off your fan. Well, base. the argument I was making is maybe it costs more than fifteen dollars a month to operate the games these days than it did back ten years ago. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think you'd Maybe. probably be willing to swallow seventeen ninety nine a month. I think you could probably be willing to swallow that. Yeah. I think something above that is a little ridiculous for our game. But is it really because it costs twenty five bucks to go to the movies these days, and that's for one three hour entertainment? How much entertainment do you get from one month's yeah, worth of come gameplay? On. Who does who doesn't movie hop though? No, I mean not that I do, but like I know that's a breach other people do of contract. I mean, I'm just saying <laughs> not that I would. I'm just saying I, I wouldn't. I'm torn on it. I, I would probably pay, I would probably, to be honest with you, I would probably I'm pay quiet about that. $150 a month to play this video game. This one. I would probably Because pay. you know you're going to enjoy it that I would much. Probably, I would probably pay that. I mean, How for, much? Star, for Star Trek, I'd probably, you could probably talk me into nearly $200 a month. A month, a month I mean, yeah. Honestly. I mean, totally honest. I would hate it. I would hate it, but to play Star Trek online, I would probably be willing, I would probably be willing to spend $200 for the video game and then $200 a month. I would be pissed and I would rant about it, but I'd probably you know what? my tongue and do it. If they if they charge it up to that much, honestly, I'd go run an old BBS, get a copy well, of Trade Wars with the Star yeah. Trek no, mod, I mean, and I just run that. They and better be happy. they better Pum they better bombs. sell the game with an accessory that <laughs> yeah. does me that does other pleasure pleasurable things for me. I mean, now don't get me wrong, I'm not happy about it, but I am. They have got me in a market with this game that I want to play. This I've wanted to play this game for four years now, and you're not the only person that's and that I, desperate. And now I just want to play it that much harder now that I'm seeing all the screenshots. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now we can move on. Yeah. All right, move moving on. forward. All right. So we've gotten some recently uh, interesting articles that have been out. Um, you know, interviews and, and whatnot for Star Trek Online. Yes. And we thought we'd cover a couple of them because we uh, thought we would. We likes us the details. Mm-hmm. So, Jeremy, you specifically highlighted this uh, ship Q and A here that was done over at Massively. Um, yeah. Tell me. Tell me what jumps out at you because um, some of this stuff we kind of already heard of before, but. Yeah, it's uh, this is true with a lot of new articles that are coming out. It's not really new stuff, but it's um, painted in such a way as to confirm things that we had recently inferred. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, so there are this one. I, I mean, one Ships important thing this, that this is a good one. Ships of the same class or tier have the same stats. Right. So if you know uh, you have a cruiser and you have a Excelsior class, but if you're you know if you're in that same 
range, you're going to bas- basically have the same abilities. Yeah, it means that uh, yeah, the I customization that. that you can you yeah. can set up your own customization, that's but not, you don't have to worry about being stuck into a ship design that you don't like just because you want two engineering slots. I I have that. Uh, I don't get that. Yeah, not even a little bit. I kind of it kind of to me seems like like you take a ship like the Excelsior that has a massive warp nacelles. It should be able to generate a stronger, faster, better warp field yep. than of the Miranda class, yep. which has small warp nacelles. And sure. also, if you have an Excelsior class, um, it well, would be maybe far less be. likely to fly her apart then than most other classes. Only if you sure. turn her into the wave. <laughs> well, yeah, but you obviously turn her into the wave. <laughs> you got it. You got to turn her into the wave then. Uh, all right. What do you guys think? <laughs> no, am, am, am I misunderstanding? No, no. you am know what that is? That's basically that's basically saying you know uh, you don't have to. Not only do you not have to understand Star Trek and the ships. That's fine. Okay, fine. Throw that out there. You don't need to play Star Trek online to know about Star Trek online. Whatever. Um, but that's also basically saying that let's take the complexity out of the game. Why on earth are well, we trying? Well, they're not saying to those things aren't there. They're just saying that if you if you get that ship at that. If you, well, okay. So well, let me give is, you a more solid the example. Quote is all, all ships of the same class and tier have the same stats. Yeah, so let me give you a more solid example. The yeah. Defiant class ship and the Gallant class ship. Okay. Both the same tier, same type of ship, and they're, they look really similar as well, just as a side note. Is that Whoa. the Gallant right there? No, that's some sort of that's science ship. Else. But, the but Gallant looks like a squash Defiant. A Gallant and sort of. a Defiant are different, though. I mean, obviously right. they're going to have different stats. No, they're the same ship uh, tier but like and the same the class. But in real world, they're... Cheap different. In they the got different. World. They got different stuff in it. Oh wait, a minute. you Chris. guys made fun of me for saying in the real world a couple episodes. Ago. <laughs> no, that was just me. <laughs> no, that was yeah, that was just you. No, I'm, I was with you, Chris. Um, oh, that's right. We made fun of Jeremy for saying Star Trek wasn't the real world. Yeah, that's and I almost was. had to walk uh, out. Yeah, you yeah. almost had to. <laughs> but no, I, I don't. I don't know if I get that. I mean, well, that's like, just like if it happened to that way, like it was just a random coincidence that wow, after we spent a lot of time thinking about it, it turns out that yeah, the ships in the same class and and, and stats, sure, and the tier. Okay, tat, let me put it another way. The same stats. That's fine. But you not as a choice. You don't like the Olympic, right? You think it's ugly and it looks like it's got Down syndrome in it. That's the medical ship one, right? Yeah, right. The, the one with the ball on the, the front. Okay, yo, dude. Y- you yeah. hate that one. Dude. There's another one in that same class that looks very similar called, I think it's the Hope class or something. But then there's oh one that looks God, like, the but then there's one that looks like more yeah. like an, an Intrepid what? class. All in right. the same tier. I don't really tier. like the Intrepid either, but sure. No, but if you were going that so route. So what you're saying is, is is ships in the same tier are both ugly as, as sin. No, I'm saying that if you <laughs> wanted to go up that route, you could avoid it's the just ships. just one has a ball and one doesn't. You could avoid the ships that you don't think look good without sacrificing stats that you were aiming for. Oh. Oh, you know what? I'm screwed. If I hit yeah. a ship that I really want, it's like the Sovereign class. I think the Sovereign class kind of looks evil, but you know what? That mother effer has some stats. Like, it yeah. should be able to kick some ass. Right. Um, but I still think it looks kind of evil, and I'm probably not going to play it. You know what? I'm just going to have to make that a conscious decision. I'm. I, that's just the way it is, because you know what it is? You want it's those abilities, so you have to world. have that ship. End of story. You want you want ability X? That only is available in ship Y. All right. You have to use how, that. How about well, this? How about this? You're playing World be. of Warcraft, uh-huh. and you want some of the elven abilities, but you think elves are ugly. Yeah. So so you choose. You don't you don't just get to be right. like the one of the cow right. characters and get the elven stats. That's not how it works because that's not the exactly. friggin' universe it exists in. Am I misunderstanding or is that exactly what we're talking about? That's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, it's very similar. Right. I mean, we yeah. got to uncover more about this. Maybe if people have heard more, maybe we're misunderstanding. That's Cryptic, the way it's going to be though. Up, man. The the individual types and tiers will all have the same stats. I mean, that's that doesn't mean is. like I, I'm going to be able to upgrade to another ship. I'll just be in another yeah, tier in another class and get more pile. abilities. I mean, right. I'm still going to play the F out of it, but it seems like right. it seems I don't know. It seems a little like it's not quite hitting it. Um, there's confirmed plans to add more ships to the lineup too, which Ooh, we, like which yeah. aren't in yet. I like that. To touch on a previous topic, however, some people are afraid that the new ships added might be purchasable only because technically they're only cosmetic upgrades if you already have access to the ships with the exact same huh. stats. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, you know, but if you've got a baseline of good ships, then that's all it really. And they're and let's be clear, yeah. they're extremely customizable. They are. The and ships actually, that are in there now, or you, 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 there's a ton of possibilities. Okay. So there's already It's just that the baseline yeah. is all the same. And right. there will be more bases mm. to, to be based off of. Okay. Yeah. I might be all right with that. All right. So there's Not a little maybe. note here. We'll We've see. got, uh, is this some confirmed? I reserve the right to be grumpy about it later. This is a quote from that same right. article. Oh, Okay. Escorts are the quick-moving, precision-striking ships of the fleet. They're not as hardy as other ships, but they're tough to hit, and they fit... Cannons. They can fit cannons. 
which are high damage, almost sniper style weapons. That's cool. Sounds kind of cool. No, again, oh. escorts are the tactical tree of ships, basically. Cruisers are big ships with a big crew and huge engines yeah. provide with lots of power so yeah. they can fit a lot of guns and send big boarding, big boarding parties and repair their hull. Those and are the subsystems engineering type of ships. And then there's science ships that can detect cloaked vessels, use nice. tractor beams to hold other ships in place, and expose their weak sides. Oh, that sounds fun. They can take out other ship shields with powerful tractor beams, and they can lend aid to other ships when needed. Now, keep in mind that these are just generalities, for the most part. Actually, at I thought they were, but we have a, a link to an article later on that we'll get to. That well, and and in the tactical, in the new tactical part two video, that's the or is part one. Maybe. Yeah, they that's what the notes that. are from. Yeah. yeah so originally, we had been led to believe, believe basically that the ship classes were entirely customizable, and you could fly in a, a defiant that had cloaking technologies. Forever. You know, that, that was basically a science ship defiant. Right. Well, but now this the is thing telling is, us not but there's so ways, much. But well, you know, you got you have slots, you have bridge crew mm -hmm. between your boffs and your slots. Between slot, slots and buffs, you can and modify a ship yeah. to do other right and other types of equipment. You can modify a ship, a defiant class, to be more sciency. More sciency, but not entirely sciency. Again, though, that actually that actually agrees with what Brian and I were just saying earlier. A defiant ship isn't meant to be an intrepid ship. Yeah. If you want science, you get you get Voyager intrepid, right? The intrepid style. If you want damage, you do defiant. That's the whole thing Brian and I are saying is they need to be true to the characteristics of that ship because cannon. Is oh, supposed okay, to be they viable. are. I think you misunderstood. A little. Uh, oh, well, we can talk later. Well, so no, Clarify I think that, that means that what we were getting all worked up about <laughs> earlier is maybe we shouldn't be getting so worked up that it sounds like that's exactly what we want. Yeah, kind of does. Fist bump. Nice. Nice. I all just right. bumped my thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thing bump. bump. <laughs> All right. We've got a, gr a ground combat Q&A. We've had a lot of questions about ground, ground combat because we're seeing a lot of space combat. And I'm actually one of the few people looking forward to ground combat. I think I am as well. No, but I'm really are all space. I really I'm am. really looking forward to oh, yeah. helping. All space. All the way. You know, I want to get into closed beta so badly because I think that the ground combat needs a lot of work. And I think that uh, I can help. Yeah. I, I want to help. I know. I know. Well, they don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Uh, each episode is a five-act instance. With those five acts are three to five ground maps. Does that mean so you've got, you start out in space, for example. Right. You warp to a planet. You beam down, or you, now, we should note, ground combat doesn't necessarily mean ground. You all, there are also No, it's like space stations. Right, space you can be stations, in, other in, ships. indoor, yeah. Yeah, yeah other indoor ships. or outdoor. Now, see, honestly, the, the indoor stuff on other <laughs> ships and stations, I, I'm really excited <laughs> for. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Just Ryan but the, something in the, the notes. The, the, the ground now. combat, like going down to the surface, I'm only like a little excited for because, you know, I, it, most of it just doesn't look that interesting. It looks like most other MMOs to me. You know, it's like there's trees well, and yeah. rocks and crap. Yeah. I mean, unless it's really alien looking, I'm it not that is, interesting. Though. You know, some but of some, of, it, some of it is. Some of it is. And yeah. some of it I want to play, some but of some it. of it I'm just going to be like, oh, do I really have to go there? Not that yeah. cool. Right. Yeah. Like, there's know. been uh, some I screenshots gotcha. of, like, the floaty rocks that we talked about last episode, and there's another shot that we talked about four or five episodes with, like, giant mushrooms. Those look like really cool-looking alien worlds, but then there's some that oh, are just, yeah, like, one, yeah. a path in the woods. It could be Portland. It yeah. really could. But you know what? If they're a path in the woods, and you're walking along, and boom, Orion right, slave girl, because this I'm like in. in shorthand to me. So what, what? what do you mean here? Oh, so this is the, the breakdown of, of how, how much... How, what percentage is space? Oh, so what percentage 60, is ground? 40, so like sixty percent space, forty. Yeah. Ground? So standard oh, episodes so on the, of the nah, main story arcs are sixty space, forty ground. Oh, and then you have patrol type missions, which are a hundred percent in space. Almost a hundred percent. All right. Then you've got star clusters. This is um, ex exploration like content. Oh, so you just decide I'm going to go off. This area looks populated. I'm going here, and they're fifty fifty. Yeah. Oh, epic! So that means that anybody that... You just pick up and decide, I'm going to go over here, I'm going to find my ship. Most people are most excited about space combat right now, and this is leaning towards giving them what they want. Especially the fact that the patrol yeah, missions... That sounds oh, sorry, really cool. Yeah, I'm excited I, about that. I was that. almost done. Oh. Go so go ahead. Okay. Well, let me ask you guys something. <laughs> How often are you going to... Super often. Um, you know, get, jump in your ship, yep. and then just fly off to some star cluster and just do random Constantly. Game. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Really? Yeah. Well, dude, I'm going to explore. I'm going to go where no man has gone before. I'm going to be like, that's the farthest the map goes. Go. Really? That's what I'm going to do. And, the and only time that I think I'll go back and, and go along the main episodes is if something is blocked to me or locked off because I haven't finished it. 
That's the wow. only time I'll probably so you, go do it. You both think your main gameplay is going to be farting around, having fun until you need something. You're going to play that. That really, you know what that does? That stretches out the main game content. A I lot. intend a lot. to play this game for years so, to come. So you get, so there's no rush, no reason to blow through the That's game right. content. That's right. Yep. You just hang out. Yeah. Now, I love max. that idea. I should actually say, though, that I might not be able to do that because as one thing that we're going to do with Stoked is try and focus on new content as it rolls out. If it's high-end content that's only available Multiple for characters? admirals, we might have to go and push through the content for might, for the might, sake of our fans. Think, maybe we'll have our show character and our... No, I've... I pretty much constant. I I'm gonna be like the Leroy Jenkins of the show. So pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fly all around. Then when it's time to do the new content, you guys tell me where you're at. I'll fly and I'll be like, "What's up, bitches?" And then and I'll then screw everything right up for you, <laughs> pulling all the bad guys, and then I'll warp out. Those are nice. gonna be some epic episodes, guys. Those are gonna like be that. great. <laughs> you know, I really love the idea of. Oh shoot! Well, it's uh, it's eight thirty nine o'clock. Baby just went to bed. I've got a forty five minutes hour to kill before I want to go hit the sack mm-hmm. or watch TV. I'll just fire up the game and go fly off to some star cluster for a just little while. Randomly shoot yeah. yourself off into space. Oh, and then if I'm gonna do a big gameplay session on the weekend, I'll do storyline or something. Right. Oh, I love it. All right. Moving on. <coughs> um, most melee attacks ignore shields. Now what is a melee attack? Well, uh, anytime you go to the surface Slash. as a captain, you've got three abilities. Two will be assigned by your weapon. So, so you're shooting it- or you're something like that. Yeah, it's yeah. usually one is like a primary fire, like just a, a hand phaser if you're using that. And then two would be some special ability like set it to stun or something like right, that. Right. And three is a melee attack. These usually include some sort of knockback to get your, your so opponent like you out of melee. you the butt of your gun. Yeah. Right. And that's going to go right through their shields. That's right. Okay. It might not do a great deal of damage based on its own, but it won't be blocked oh, yeah, by your any shields. Your next note here just says uh, all weapons will have three types of attacks. Uh, there your it primary, is. Your primary damage type, your secondary special type, and then a melee, which is right. awesome. Wow. Um, that also means that we've also been told you can use martial arts and things like that. So nice. if you don't Super equip a weapon, mar- martial arts? if you don't equip oh, a weapon, pull, pull out the foil. You start, probably have like a punch fighting. and a nerve pinch and then a oh. knockback. Ooh, uh, I like that. Yeah. Now, tell me about this replay mechanism. I, I just want to make one comment on this. I looked over here and uh, I just got this out of the corner of my eye, so it was a little blurry. And it says replay mechanism in quotes. And I swear to God, I was convinced it said Rue McClenahan. And so <laughs> I was wondering what Rue McClenahan was doing in Star Trek Online. Well, but in continue. ground combat. In ground combat, He's helping yeah. someone do a mission you've already completed. and will he? give you a secondary reward. She, he doesn't know. He doesn't know who... who, who never who mind, dude. You, you McClen- know, from Rue Golden Girls? Oh, 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 that's a chick. Thank you gotcha. It's an old chick. Is, it the, uh, is that the mom? Travel back. Was that Sophia? Around. No. Was it? It's the tall one. She's dead. What? Dorothy? No, that's not Dorothy. No, that's not Dorothy. Wasn't it? Who was no, the... Who was McClenahan. Is that, is that Sophia? No. And it's only one that's left is... Um, Dude. What's the other one? Betty White. No, Betty White's alive. I know. Uh, you just said which one's Blanche. left. Blanche. Blanche. That's the other one. It's Blanche. Devereaux. Blanche. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so replay oh, mechanisms. Oh, replay. Yeah, so this true. sounds really cool. So replay mechanism is like, Jeremy, I want to go play this thing. Will you help me? And if you sidekick, which is what they call it in Champions, where you jump down to my level and play it with me, you, uh-huh. you still get a secondary bonus for it? Yeah, even if I've already done the mission three ranks ago. You get a little good job, Duder, and yeah. thanks for helping. And right. we have no idea what these are, but they're going to be some sort of incentive for you going back and replaying with your friends. No, I, straight That's up, Rue McClanahan would be a big incentive for me to replay with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> now, Maximum PC did an interview with uh, Craig Zinkovich, and is this mm-hmm. the first Maximum PC article we've seen on Star Trek Online? Because I thought it was yeah. really well done. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. This yeah. was a really well done article. Now, one of the things they covered in this Maximum PC article is they are, there are going to be surrenders in the main storyline. Right, so sometimes you don't just blow everything up. You're not always blowing mm. the crap out of everything. Drop your shields, and power you off surrender? your engines, and prepare no, to be boarded. Oh. Prepare okay. to be boarded. We're coming over there. But you don't surrender. You never surrender. You never surrender. It's kind of Galaxy Quest-y there. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But all right. Galaxy Quest, all the movie. All right. Dude, uh, I just watched that the other day. That's that awesome. movie is actually pretty awesome. It is. It's the only VHS I've ever stolen from Hollywood video. Jeremy! I mean, I paid for it. Man, we are endorsing Eventually. all kinds of badness here today. <laughs> all right, jeez, we just sound like the worst people ever. Jeez, it's still are. in the old Hollywood uh, video cover. For some you know? reason, like, the whole concept of stealing the VHS is awful, but downloading it off the internet, no biggie. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, death in space equals return to spawn point with some damage to your system. Yeah, so it's not like, you're not going to lose your ship. Huh. You're not going to be thrust back to Earth um, to pick up a new ship. You know, you just Who go back that? to... If you're you fighting in the Tikdinga system, you'll just go back to where you warped in. And so if you're off killing Bajorans 
and uh-huh. they somehow do some sort of sneaky Bajoran tactic right. where they trick you into getting your ship blowed up. Yeah. Uh-huh. Not because of their <coughs> superior abilities. No, no, it must have been lying. like a mind They're controller. They're lying yeah. bastards is what then they are. Then when you respawn, you have some damage done to your ship, but you just, wherever the spawn point's at. Yeah, um, maybe that just means your energy systems can't go all the way up to 100%. Maybe you're limited here's, to 95. Here's, or here's an interesting oh, one, which we kind of knew, but or it makes sense. Crew levels the amount of crew on your ship will affect the way your hull regenerates. So you can use crew, uh, you can use cr- your crew as a boarding party against enemies um, so that way your enemies can't repair and heal as fast? No, it basically means there's, I don't know if you've seen the, the tactics videos yet. If you haven't, you should watch them. But there, there's a crew indicator underneath your ship where it has right. the shields. A yeah. crew indicator. And, and the crew, um, <laughs> the crew what do you call those? The crew indicator? The, the crew indicator. The crewdometer. Um, will go down as you take damage. And the lower that, mean that my crew, crew is thing, dying? Yes. That's brutal. I know. And that doesn't recharge. You have to go somewhere else and, and get more crew. Oh, that's awful. So as you're, let's say your crew is, is falling and you're taking damage. Well, your damage to your heal, hull will, will slowly heal based on how much crew you have left. It's, it's like, like they're repairing pirates. It's like your energy. It's like Sid Meier's Pirates. It's like, you guys ever play that game? No. Yeah. You're, you're, you're going around on your ship. Okay. You're doing your ship battles. Oh. And then what was really cool is as you were hitting them with cannon fire, their yeah. ship takes damage. It yeah. can hurt their, sh- their sails. You also killed their people. The right. less people they had, That's what the this more is then, then when you crash into them, then you're sword fighting on the ship. And like, That's if you killed all their people. And if you got <laughs> all their people dead. That's same, still right there. Same, be, same thing. And it was great. It was it's a good brutal, gameplay. though. I mean, I think I love my crew, and I think they're Dying. I mean, I've taken the time as yeah. the captain to learn their names of all of them. Well, that's very kind of you. So to think that they're dying is just horrible. Well, then you better not have your shields drop. But anyway, another thing you can use Chris with your crew decator repercussions, you guys. When you use <laughs> when you use abilities like boarding parties, which we've also seen in this video, yep. your crew your crew decator will decrease. <laughs> so let's. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've moved on. It's the crewdometer. Crewdometer oh. will we'll decrease. So if you then start taking the crew damage, metric readout. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. I was I was thinking I was thinking crude bar or or crew bar, <laughs> but no, <laughs> crew metric readout is, is tight. That's right. going with that one. So as you send people off to to board uh, other ships, you you'll get less crew. So if you take damage, then you will regenerate that slower. That is so awesome. Yeah. You can also use your How crew. How much do you love that, Brian? Come on. You, you know what would actually be really great is if every time that it went down, like you lost a couple of people, it actually showed up on the screen. It's like um, Rod- Rodney Jenkins has passed away in from infirmary. dysentery, or 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 like literally, like you see someone float past, like your, oh, your spew <laughs> scrape. Wouldn't that be pimp? That'd like be- it'd be like it really it really drive the pain home. It would. There's repercussions. There's, There's repercussions. repercussions, you guys. All right. So that's very cool. We got another note here. Um, each boss, that's your bridge officer, can get mm-hmm. up to four abilities, one per rank, uh, at, on top rank stations. That means that, uh, recall that each bridge station that you have has a rank of its own. So you've got... You Completely know, independent to the people stationed there. So oh, if you have okay. an instant station, you can never use abilities that are higher than an instant rank. Okay. So, um, so that yeah. That, that was a good explanation, wasn't it? That You did a very good job, Jerry. <laughs> I'm but so impressed. Now, this is something I'm kind of de- um, upset with, because I thought that my boffs were going to be basically full-fledged characters. Not the fact that they would only have one ability per rank. Mm. That seems a bit limiting. It seems hugely limiting. Yeah. So, uh, I don't like it, but you know what? I'm still going to play, and I'll probably still have are. a good time. You'll probably have a blast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, uh, I'm reading through your notes here, trying to figure you out... Points. Um, trying to, you have a few more notes here on boffs, like maximum abilities... Is six boffs, twelve abilities average. So this is like the highest end ships has six boff stations. Yeah. The combination of ranks among Boff-tions. all those different stations is only gonna be twelve. So now, you're never gonna be overloaded with three hundred buttons on your screen. The way we know that works like for ground combat, yeah. if you're playing with a group of people, is if you're playing with if you're playing with, you know, uh, three people, then there will be uh, two boffs that will step in right. to play uh, in place of other characters. If you're, right. playing with, yeah. if you're playing with only like two people, then the team leader will pick the boffs that will fill in for other actual human players. Right. Hmm. Um, this article said that by default it will be from the team leaders um, from their own ship. But let's say the three of us are playing together, and I Which? don't have very good boffs. We probably will. But let's say that I'm the team leader, but I don't have very good boffs. So I can say, Chris, bring one of yours. Jeremy's Brian brings boffs one of yours. are terrible, you guys. Horrible boffing. Right? Horrible boffs. It's true. I'm All sorry. Right. Uh, there are um, there are there we've got information. That there's going to be very large away missions with multiple teams and no boffs. Right. All just players. All this captains. is basically like ground based fleet actions. So you'll have several teams of five captains each uh, in the same location doing some sort. Now, of I'm not following here. Uh, security escort. Well, maybe you should have read this article. Well, the th- <laughs> no, it's it's 
the thing is, is he really should have the security. Oh, I did read it. That's why it's strange that I'm not following your notes here because I actually thought the Maxim PC article was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so but clearly, we glean different information from. Well, <laughs> you guys are different gleaners. <laughs> Talk about the highly aggressive red shirts that you could beam in. Because oh, this is an ability, a, a triggerable thing that you can do called security. You escort. inject them with rage. Well, no, you just you activate this ability and whoa, a group of four or five red shirts beam in, and they're all like gung ho, and they run off towards the enter- right, enemy. Okay, so I was mixed up because I thought this was I was trying to connect this to space combat because I was picturing like you're doing a space battle. And you beam red shirts over there, but this is you're down on ground combat, and you just bring in a bunch of backup all yeah. of a sudden. Ah, uh-huh. that was my disconnect. Cannon okay. fodder, got yeah. it. Yes. Exactly. They you just beam them. Can you just beam them in? You can just picture it, and they're all like screaming and yelling at the enemy, and like. Rah, rah, rah. I think it sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're ruining my show. Notes just, just here. click, just click the "I take no responsibility for anything" button. You should have italicized this, these notes you're adding, Brian. Oh, yeah. so, uh, sorry, sorry. I didn't really have time. There will be some randomly generated content from the Genesis engine, but most seems to be uh, handed off to designers to finish. Yeah, so this was, hmm. we've always wondered if the Genesis engine is going to be a live thing, you know, in the game. Will it randomly yeah. generate things? And based on this interview, Zinc has indicated that it will be. I kind of like that. I do like that. Yeah. As long as I the Genesis engine isn't a bunch of crap, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> so, so if you fly so off the to Genesis random. engine will be generating content on the fly. Yes, some content. Right. Like yeah, well probably just, just enough to keep things interesting. When you go off to the star clusters and you beam down to a planet, it's going to generate, uh, uh, you know, and it uh, generates instances. So I mean, it's it's kind of like when you're playing Final Fantasy and you're walking around yeah. and it goes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's that's that's what it is. <laughs> it's that. Or like in um, Champions Online, when you get a random uh, citizen comes up to you and says, "Go here and kick these guys." Oh yeah, yeah. When you go to that place, those uh, dungeons, if you call them that. Are randomly generated, and hopefully the Genesis engine will be much better than those because they're kind of jank. But so if you look at the in, in Star Trek, you have the the Milky Way galaxy, and you have got um, that's where we live. You've got nice. You've got the Alpha Quadrant, you got Beta Quadrant, and you've got the Gamma the Gamma Quadrant and the Delta Quadrant. That's yeah. right. Well done. Now Please those are going to be quadrants. split up in Star Trek Online between Federation area, Klingon area. No, these are sectors. You're thinking sectors. Yeah. Well, that's you're thinking it, quadrants. I quadrants know. and sectors are I not don't the understand. same. So. So they're just their, they're just their areas of space. That's nothing. There's nothing new about that. No, but uh, what this uh, they're the controlled is, sections though, okay. right? And, and the episodic they they content over time. Those are different than the quadrants, right. right? And the episodic content that we've been told will be in the game is split up into major story arcs that interact with the the ruling species of each okay. sector. So you're so, going to go right. to that sector, and that's going to these 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 episodes for this season all take place in the Cleon sector, right? Ah, cool. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, uh, anything else you want to cover in this uh, section of the of the? No, I don't need to, to mention. No? Nope, that I think that's just about it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, wh- one of those was just a uh, little note from one of our. Just lectures. to let you guys in on a little note here, we're using Google Docs now because Google Wave has been so much fail. So yeah. Chris has it loaded over here. Brian's got it loaded over there. So Brian keeps adding typing live notes for the show. Yeah, no, well, I just want to make the show it. better. Yeah. So, Thanks, Brian. So, You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> if anything inappropriate shows up in the live show notes on the site. You can thank Brian. <laughs> well, that's, that's kind of a cop out. <laughs> no, I know you're just going to add stuff in. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. No. No. Of course, no. never do that. No. Uh, so we've met, we've made mention to it a couple of times here on this episode, but we've got a couple of new oh, videos. Oh, both of those out. came out this week? I think since at least wow. the last episode. I think so, week. yeah. That's, I know. It's been a big week. And the Star Trek tactics show a lot of battle gameplay, oh, and yeah. uh, they look good. look good. And not just gameplay, but actual explanations as well yeah. of what's going on. They did a lot like, they, the, like the, the, the Future's History videos they did where they have uh, yeah. a couple of people from the uh, get, from the behind the scenes yeah. talking about different stuff. They did the same thing, and it's great. Mm-hmm. Um, you noticed, and I agree, that the gameplay looked a lot smoother. Yeah, we're, we're losing the jerkiness. Yeah, yep. which they mentioned before was a problem with their their better footage recording. <laughs> well, uh, and it's also pre beta footage because they shot it a little bit ago. Right. Um, so, uh, we'll link to those in the show notes because they're great videos to check out. Uh, any, any particular notes you want to glean from this? Well, there was the AO- AOE uh, torpedo explosion ability that we saw that where you just launched a, a salvo of torpedoes that just blew up in space. That was cool. I like that. Yeah. Um, and just the ending of the first ship tech six thing was funny. Where the there was a bunch of people fighting a Borg cube, and you hear the voiceover. We go, are the Borg. Resistance is. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was cool. That yeah, was that, pretty tight. It was fun. That was pretty tight. All right. Now, uh, on the second part video two. in the tactics part two, we've got a couple of different things. You got you, you got a couple of different notes. I want to jump to one thing specifically. Sure. Yeah. Right away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lay it in. 
We noticed in the tactics number two video that there is a scene where there's some some mis mis goings on with like a Cardassian ship. Oh, mis goings like on! And if you look quick and closely, you'll notice a Galaxy class ship sans saucer. Section. No saucer. I just want to point out that mis goings on would be that someone like was trying to have goings on and then they <laughs> failed to have goings on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the Cardassians were trying to have their goings on. Accidentally un goings on. And then something came <laughs> along and interrupted their goings on, and now and it's it just happened on. to be a, a Galaxy saucerless. A, a sa saucerless galaxy class. Yeah. Chris, Although, if you look somewhere else, I have really misunderestimated your grammar. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, they're just more complicated than you realize. It's very <laughs> complex language, this English of ours. Um, yeah, if you look closely down at one of the you asteroids, see the saucer. It's yeah. So you've got That's pretty tight. You got you got saucer sep. You got mm -hmm. saucer sep in this video. And, now, um, saucer. We have been told before that there will be no saucer separation in the game. There will be no multi-vector attack mode. Um, uh oh. So what's well, going people, on? In, people over in the Jupiter Colony Forum, bright bunch over there. Actually, those guys have been mm. ha hooking us up with links and news like you wouldn't believe. Top yeah. notch. Um, I almost don't have to look as much anymore. And you you were mentioned in the forum. You said you know that to me looks like an escort mission. Yeah. What? Well, this is just my uh, well, supposition. Could be, actually, was like yeah. you get hailed by uh, Captain. We have an incoming hail from a Galaxy class starship. A distress but it, signal. Or it's something. a civilian. And so you come up and you answer their hail, and it's like, oh, we're just the saucer. We yeah. lost our bri our battle bridge because they're useless. they're being under attack by Cardassians. So we then you have to go. Saucer. So you have to go with the saucer and go and rescue the rest of the galaxy ship. Ah, I that's think that's cool. probably gonna, what's going to happen because they've mentioned other things before. Like, well, we were told we weren't going to have that ship, and they're like, oh, it's probably an NPC. So this is probably the same thing. Okay, yeah, that's now, still pretty cool. We've got a note here about. Um, the uh, boarding parties. They launch shuttles, which mm -hmm. then work in, uh, internally on the enemy. So they're like they're like an independent ship that attacks the enemy. Yeah. So it's sort of like you're launching um, an attack, like a like like a attack fighter. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's pretty slick. Although I, I thought it was really funny in the tactics video that one of the shots of them launching the fighters has them just as they reach the other ship and and, and land the ship blows up. Yeah. Yeah. Which has Tight. apparently uh, led to some people starting to call them suicide bombers, which is not something Cryptic wants on the record. Tora, Tora, Tora! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Well, and if, you're, if, if not having crew counts against your regeneration ability, then it would suck to lose them. It would. So <laughs> you guys got to think deep, right? Ooh. Right, right. So it's a give and take if you want to spend your crew in that mm, manner. Give and, and there was a yeah. huge shot of the bridge in, uh, for, for a Galaxy class yeah, ship a huge in the shot video, too. Of a huge, huge I mean, it was already big. You know, I don't know if you saw our, our last e episode, but we talked. A, Brian w went on at length about how big. Such a bridge hater. It was so large. It was so. Now the Galaxy class bridge was already large. It was big, and this made it even bigger. <laughs> TV adds twenty pounds. Sort of, sort of a thing. One hundred and twenty. Still adds one hundred and twenty pounds. I thought the bridges. I thought the bridge it had was, a lot of girth. I thought the bridge was just right. In fact, I thought it could even be bigger. I was actually a little disappointed at size. <laughs> Chris likes them big. You heard it here. All right, so yeah. let's move on. You like what we like to do here at the end of the show? Let's talk a little bit about some screenshots. That's oh, right. Now this do. is where the video version of the show really shines because we'll try to put these in. We're doing it a little different today. I'm not sure if we will get them in, so it, we'll at least link to them. Yeah, at the well, very least. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll get it. We'll do the Chevy Chevy. Video rendering. Video. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this one. You've got yeah that big guy up there. This is at the Memorpaga. MMORPG.com has some more screenshots. These guys have had a ton. And one of them is a Miranda class vessel that's been bulked up. And it's it's like over a space Sean station. Lloyds. Fighting a Klingon. And what's really kind of epic about this shot is you've got is multi layered. You've got two, I at least see two Klingon ships, maybe more. Yeah. Asteroid field in the background, light source, sun in the background. Mm. You've got. Bat uh, battles going on. Just uh, I once again, I'm impressed as heck with the. Man, and if you look great. at the shot in the top left so corner, great. where one of the Klingon shots uh, ships is, it's obscured by the the space clouds. By the dust. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, yeah, it's a little harder to see. So it means somebody could be sneaking up on you. And you wouldn't. Oh, I do like the sneaky. We've also got a shot here of what is this? A Gorn ship? Uh, no, that's ship? a Klingon. I think it's a cruiser. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not so good with the Klingon ships. Yeah, I'm not so good with the fed ships. Klingons either, really. are dumb. Who cares about the Klingons? Klingons are dumb. Jeremy does Declared. I, now, I now, care. Uh, now over at IGN.com, there are a whole truckload of screenshots. They dropped 10 new ones on us. I'm going to just cover a couple Those in this jerks. show, but I'll link to all of them in the show notes. And you want to look at They are good ones, people. They are really good ones. <laughs> yeah, especially that first one. That's the one that got me. 
Yeah. Really? So, I yeah. mean, there's something about, I don't know what it is, but there's space plus purple atmosphere things just <laughs> yeah. equals amazing With wallpaper green, quality. Platforms. Yeah, it just looks this is great. Also, I think this is like a Romulan territory, and we haven't seen a lot of the Romulan stuff. Yeah, yet. that's right. And, it looks uh, really good. So you got a couple of warbirds in this shot, mm-hmm. actually three, actually. You've and got it's like a space station. There's like a cool ring around the planet and the, and ships, yep. and they're firing, and they're killing, and it's awesome looking. And that and, ship oh, in the foreground, I, it's I, just I, awesome looking. I, I can't really readily identify it, but look at the way that the light glares off the hull and everything. Yeah. It just looks... It looks real. They've done such a nice job with the look and feel of the space portion of this game. It's almost too much. Uh, now, money shot. Now, here is a shot. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this shot is uh, of a little ship fighting the Borg uh, with the registry of NCC-1701A. Womp womp. This oh, is uh, the a movie version from the original series. Of but, Chris, the what does that registration mean? <laughs> that Seriously? actually is a registration. There is. What was that Are in? Are you going to screw with me what here? What was that in? What, what? was the, the NCC? There is a... Uh, oh, was just, I don't know. What was I just watching where somebody was talking about that? I don't remember. I, I think, no, that's just a registration oh, number. It could that's be in the That's in the Blu-ray commentary of the Star Trek movie. They, really? Where they discuss what oh, the NCC man. stands for. There's, I'm telling you, there's no actual valuable information there. It's all lies. Take it as lies. This is, the NCC stands for something stupid. But what is cool is <laughs> the 1701 is the 17th class first rollout of that new edition. Yeah, which is a Constitution class in this yep. shot. And uh, it is just a great looking shot to begin with. The NCC 1701A looks like it's been modified slightly with its hull, maybe a little bulked up, like yeah. just in terms of like some some material replacement. And it's um, shooting at a Borg sphere, which is awesome. It does look pretty pretty pimping right there. That's a little non-canon, guys. It's it's a lot of non-canon, <laughs> but a lot of awesome. It's a lot of non-canon. I'm totally totally okay with. <laughs> yeah, I don't know exactly how I'm okay with that because normally I would poop on that immediately, but I love the shot so much I take it. Man, there's so many great shots here, you guys. I'm not sure which ones to cover on. Just that one. I want to talk about this one. Yes. This is uh, yep. a little DS9 love. We've we haven't gotten too much DS9 love yet. This is the first <laughs> shot that we got of an exterior <laughs> shot of <laughs> DS9 as it will appear in the game. <laughs> yep. And it looks basically just exactly like the movie. Maybe a little different lighting effect, or I mean. Television show, not movie. Yeah. Never in the movie. Never in the movie. Sad, right? Kind you know, there totally could have been, yeah. too. There could have been a they movie. They could have put it in the next-gen movie. Like, they could have been docked there. And he could, like, instead of Picard getting a random call at night from Janeway, awkward, oh, he could have been at DS9. They could have, they, yeah, dude, that would have been way better. But they could have had a DS9 movie. I yeah. Mean, there was enough content there that they could have done something really epic. Or at but, least, like, a mini series between seasons or something and yeah. just do this, like, an epic arc. That yeah. would have been cool. Oh, well. But I do like the it's fact that, that, that at least the DS9 style ship is just, or style. Starbase is just sitting there. Yeah, I don't and know. If we'll it, be able was to. It, was it actually DS Nine or was it just one that was the same? The yeah, same it class? could have been Terraknor or Impaknor. No, well, DS Nine I mean, is Terraknor, but there's Impoc-Nor. other there's other Cardassian stations. Yeah, uh, maybe. maybe. You know, but either way, I like that the style of of that is there. Yeah, that's that's really cool. And the ship that's flying in the foreground in front of it is it's crazy looking, freaking weird. It mm-hmm. looks like it looks like I don't know, like a like a little like sea monster thing, it, like a little like scallion. Doohickey Wongle. Yeah, I don't even know. I can't really identify what class that I'm is either. But it's Scallion got... Doohickey Wongle. Okay. Yeah, Brian's I'm probably going right. with that. It's the official term from yeah, now on. You, hear, you heard it's it here. That's what we're doing here. Scallion Doohickey Dongle. <laughs> okay, well, I think that just about wraps up this week's episode. This show comes out every Tuesday. Every single, sink, single, sink, single, single stinking Tuesday. <laughs> every Tuesday. Well, that was going to sound so least, slick if I said it right with my words. We shouldn't build up so much because then that's the time we'll, we won't be able well, to make it. It'll be your fault. Yeah. Uh, and you can find that over at jupiterbroadcasting.com. What's this wee garbage? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's also jupitercolony.com where there's, right, there's a forum. There's a sub oh, forum there just and for stuff. the email address, you can guys. click it. Jeremy? Uh, tips at jupiterbroadcasting.com. All right, tips. Everybody. Well, thanks so much for watching this episode of Stoked, and we'll see you next week. Later.